Now, Simi Sola recently published her very first book about her journey to the altar and the 10 years she spent waiting for the ice cream man. Take a look. I believe there are a million other people like me who have struggled with one of the most painful yet necessary elements to life, waiting. I cannot help but feel that God wants to create something beautiful out of the pain I have experienced through waiting. More specifically, my journey of waiting for my husband. It was painful for me to wait and to hope for something I had no evidence would come to pass. During my single years, I asked myself, who will I be if not a wife and a mother? I was scared to find out, scared to imagine a life without my husband by my side. Through my journey, I came to the realization that the wait was not about the getting. It was not about obtaining the ultimate prize of a husband. The wait had a purpose. The wait was part of the process. It was part of the work God was doing in me. He allowed it to continue so I could learn through personal experience something beautiful about his character. Now you see, forever truth is better than falsehood. Falsehood better than ugliness. Th those words are written by a, a, a lecturer of mine who wrote it for Her Majesty the Queen. And I have to say, when I read your book, I was reminded of that. Simisola Okai, thank you so much for joining us. We're talking about waiting for the ice cream man. How I found true love through the power of a simple prayer. It took you 10 years to write this book. I had the, the thought to write, or God dropped into my spirit as I was waiting, actually, mm -hmm. before I'd actually met uh, my husband, when I gave my life to Christ when I was around 18. And, you know, I asked him, I prayed, I said, God, I want to wait on you to find the person that I'll marry. And mm -hmm. during that waiting period, when it got really hard, you know, when I'm like, oh, God, okay, five years, six years, he dropped into my spirit that when I do this miracle, I want you to tell others. So that's why I wrote the book. Now, one of the chapters of the book, you, you, you called it almost doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you, why are you laughing? Tell, tell, us, tell us, to, without giving away all the book, <laughs> tell us a bit about almost doesn't count. Yes. Well, I had a fleece and my fleece was, God, would you pick who I would marry? And would you tell him on our first date to take me out for ice cream? So that was my fleece like Gideon. Um, so... You know, there'd be guys I'd meet that I liked, and I'd be like, God, is he the one? Is he the one? And um, I remember I was talking to this one guy, and he, he asked me, let's do this 10-question game, right? And then one of the questions he asked was if, um, no, I asked him, actually. I said, if you were to take me out on a date, where would you take me? And he said McDonald's. So I'm like, okay. I was like, oh, there's ice cream at McDonald's. Lord, maybe he gonna take me to ice cream. We're gonna have some, I mean, McDonald's, we're gonna have some ice cream. And then right after I said, with no prompting, he said, I hate ice cream. Oh. And I'm like, oh, wow. It, <laughs> so to the it, left, to the left, <laughs> next. <laughs> and I just laughed because I'm like, God, you are so specific. Like I was wondering and out of his own mouth, he mm. was like, I don't even like ice. There are other things that it, it wouldn't work. Now, so. I mean, you, you, you wrote this book to encourage other people who are waiting, not just in relationships, but mm -hmm. it could be waiting for a child, waiting for a job, waiting for a family to be put back together mm -hmm. again. Uh, what would you say was the the biggest thing that held you together while you were waiting? Because there's so many, the dynamics of waiting, so so much, so many different things you have to do. But what but one thing would you say, yes, this is a good start for you if you're waiting on God? Hands down the word of God, I have to say, because for me, there's a scripture that says in Hebrews that, um, consider those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. And so every time I get discouraged, every time I'm like, God, is he coming? Like, did you really promise this? Did your word say, you know, that you have, um, you, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. And that scripture, actually, I started writing letters to this future husband I didn't know of. And that was the substance of my faith. Sorry, it was one of your letters started by, where have you been? <laughs> 
<laughs> What's wrong with you? What took you so long? There was there were a few. Where I'm like, I don't know where you are, and I'm like 20 something, and this is hard. But I'm. It helped me to focus on faith. So if you're waiting, mm -hmm. just put your faith in God and mm -hmm. know that. Um, in that wait, if you wait on him and trust in him, that God will see you to the other side. Now, uh, for, for someone who may be watching think, you know, you were 20-something, you were just a child. I mean, I'm 40-something and I've, I've been waiting on God for a child. I've been waiting for, for a new job, for a spouse. I've been, you know, you know, you don't know the pain I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Now, I... Every situation is different, but the word of God does not change. Mm -hmm. And if Abraham, his body was as good as dead, uh, and Sarah, their, her body was as good as dead, but God's word will always come to pass. It doesn't matter how long it takes. Put your hope in him. Don't look at the circumstances or mm -hmm. your age, or I don't have this, or I don't have that. But the word of God is true. So I would say hold on to that. And I, I called it waiting for the ice cream man, but really it's like waiting on God for the ice cream. You're not waiting mm -hmm. on the promise. You're not looking at the thing, but keep your eyes on Jesus and he'll help you through, through the wait. Now there are bits of the book that you read and it just make you laugh. There are bits of the book that you read and you think, oh my goodness. Uh, but on a practical level, uh, you say the biggest thing is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where to look in the Bible uh, for this promise I'm waiting on. Do I just open the book and hopefully, hopefully it falls in the right place. Practically, what can I do to find the right scripture for me to, to read? Because I'm waiting for my pastor, but he, he's preaching about the new building, the money we need to raise. <laughs> I, I need him to tell me the scripture. Well, you know, there's no shortcuts to it. I gotta say, you know, you might be waiting a year, it might be 10, but really a relationship with Jesus Christ, that's where it started for me. Uh, when you have that, he will walk you through and that's what I really want to encourage people with that God wants a personal relationship. Even the, you know, the book almost doesn't count. That guy that I liked, that wasn't the one, I talked to God about it. I'm like, God, I like him. He's cute. Like, don't you think? And so it's like, he's so personal. Mm -hmm. And every step of the way, he wants to walk you through. Every, every person's situation is different. Every story is different, but God remains the same. And if you connect with him, he'll get you through anything. Simi, author of Waiting for the Ice Cream Man. Thank you so much for joining us and Turning Points International. Thank you.